Hello and welcome to MHA Digital Communities. My name's Katie and today we're going to be making some art inspired by nature. For today's first piece, we're going to be making a beautiful sunflower painting. We're going to be using a technique called a uh, line and wash. So we're going to be combining drawing with painting. I'd just like to talk through the materials that we're going to be using in this session so that you can be ready to get started. So you'll need some white paper, ideally something called cartridge paper, which is a little bit thicker and can take the watercolor. If you don't have that, just some white card would be fine. We're going to be using a pencil and a fine line pen. This is a black uh, fine line permanent pen. It's really like a really fine felt tip. Um, and it's important that it's permanent because when we add paint, we don't want it all to, to wash away. Um, I've also got a selection of three different paint brushes. So a medium one, a slightly bigger one, and a and an even bigger one, three sizes. You don't have to have three sizes, but it just helps if you've at least got a smaller one and a slightly bigger one. Um, if you can't get hold of a permanent black pen, you could use biro, that's fine. I've got a biro here with four different colors. You could do it in biro because that resists water. Um, I've also got my rubber and sharpener here, some water for the watercolors, and I've got some watercolors here and my palette. Um, because we're dealing with a circle shape, um, I've got this quite useful little circular tool, but you can use any round object to draw around, probably something like, like a small saucer or, you know, quite a big jam jar lid, any of those things are useful to have. I actually made myself a little template using some cardboard um, when I was doing a slightly bigger one, but as I said, uh, this one is, is kind of just slightly bigger than the bottom of a tin can. So if I was to measure that one, and I'll put my glasses on, it measures about 10 centimetres across. It doesn't have to be 10 centimetres, but that's a good, a good size that fits onto this page. Okay, so if you are ready to get started, we'll, we'll get going. Um, so this sunflower basically is going to be made up of a couple of layers. And the first layer that I've done, and you can see on this example, is I've used sort of pencil first. And then the second layer is using the paint. And then the next layer is going to be using the black pen. And finally, I finish it off by using some pencil over the top to add in some different colors. So let's get started on that one. So I'm going to take my circular template and just use my pencil to draw a circle and then once I've got that circle in the middle I'm going to need a, a bigger outer circle you could use a, a plate or a template I'm just going to do it by eye basically and I want my petals to be if we want to be precise I've got them about four centimeters I'm just going to draw a little dot there four centimeters from the circle and a little dot there four centimeters from the circle all the way around and then I've kind of got some reference points and because it's nature um, things aren't always you know completely perfect or even circles it's absolutely fine I'm just going to draw some little dots here just to roughly sketch this bigger circle just to give me an idea and remember it's in pencil so anything that you don't like the look of or you want to get rid of later is fine so i'm just using some really light dotted lines there to mark out the shape so and as i said it doesn't have to be perfect all the way around so that's fine 
And what's really nice about this activity is that there's a lot of repetition and repetition is actually really relaxing and quite soothing. So I quite enjoy that aspect of, of this uh, design. So I'm going to just start off at the top here and I'm going to start adding my petals. So it's really just a case of going from one point on the circle all the way up, up to your line, curving round. And if you notice, I'm moving my paper around just to help me, just to guide me on my way around like that. Don't worry about the shape of the top. Again, it doesn't have, each one doesn't have to be identical to the next one. They can be uneven, that's absolutely fine. So this is going to take you a few minutes. It's quite nice um, if you're doing a piece like this, perhaps to sit quietly or to put some music on. I often find if you put music on, you tend to start working to the rhythm of the music, depending on, you know, on the mood of the day. Today is a very apt day for drawing sunflowers because it's very sunny today. But even, even on an overcast or grey day, when you make this kind of artwork, it just reminds you of summer and sunshine, so it's very good. Okay, so it's just a couple of moments more adding in these petals. And there we are. So we've got the sunflower there. And I like the way there's a little bit of movement in the petals. They're not all straight out, they're kind of slightly to one side as they would be, so that, that's fine. So we've got the basic shape and now we're going to start with the centre part. So again, if you want to be precise, you could measure the middle of that circle, which is 10 centimetres wide, so the middle is going to be there at point there, five centimetres along. And then from the middle of that circle, what I'm going to start to do is just, I'm going to start to draw small circles. Um, you're, you're probably happier doing this in pencil, but I'm going to go straight into pen with mine, just to save time with this demonstration. I'm going to go straight into pen. So I'm going to start off with just some small circles close together to form a small circle. That will be the central point, and then everything else fans out from here. So just like you did with the petals, you will be drawing what are in effect sunflower, like sunflower seeds, or an impression of them, to just surround that inner circle. And then again, I'm trying to draw these roughly the same size, but again, there will be variation and that's fine. And I'm just working my way round. So these, if you notice, they're not circles, they're really more oval shapes, which are actually easier to draw than circles. They just come quite naturally as you loop the pen round. If you find drawing very small shapes a little bit tricky, it's absolutely fine to just go for larger shapes. And so you'll just keep going. Until you get to the edge. So, so you can see what to do with all of that, okay? Right, once you've done that, and um, you've filled all of the central area, then you'll go on to do the outside edges of the petals. So I think it's good to have done the initial part with pencil because if you went straight into pen with this, it would 
it just gives you the confidence to have done it in pencil first and then to go over it. And also, you can always slightly alter the shapes if you need to. And you'll find with the pen, it's just quite a smooth action. You can really kind of just jump from one to the next if you feel confident doing that, or you can have a little break in between. So you keep going all the way around with those. And now we're going to get onto the painting part so you can see what that looks like. So I've got my medium brush and I've got a little pot with some water. I tend to use these uh, spice rack pots just because they have quite a good lid, quite, quite good to use, not too big. Okay, so I'm going to take here what I will call a sunflower yellow. It's a warm yellow. Sometimes it's called golden yellow if you have a set of paints. I'm using watercolour paints, um, but you could equally use poster paints or inks depending on, on what you have available. Uh, and in this set, I've got this kind of lovely golden yellow. So I'm just going to load up some paint on my brush and put it onto my palette, get a bit more water and just make a small well of it so I've got enough and I'm not running out halfway through. So just load up some more paint. Okay, so I've got a good amount here. You can always test out how it's appearing on the page before you start. Um, so, right, so I'm going to go straight in here. Now, you don't necessarily want to have it completely even and perfect to the edge, that's fine. It can, what's nice about it is it, it can be varied. I've, um, because I've got this medium brush, I can quite easily do a whole petal. Okay, before I carry on, there's one bit I wanted to show you that I've got carried away painting. So before you add the paint, take the opportunity to rub out your initial pencil sketch. So you can rub all of that out, push the bits away, and then obviously that's not going to show through the paint. So I've left some little bits there, but that's fine. I can rub those out in a minute when that's dried. So anything that isn't covered in paint or pen will completely rub out and come out. So it won't show in your final design. Okay, so it's really, really satisfying to rub out the pencil. So when you rub out the pencil, it kind of starts to bring it out. So going back to, back to the painting area, it's also there's something just super relaxing and refreshing about using watercolour paints. Um, and a little goes a long way. This set I've probably had 20 years. It still hasn't run out. Okay, so you can see the effect of going round and doing the sunflower petals. Now for the central part, um, I'm just gonna show you how I've, how I've done that. So there is another type of art material that is quite exciting to use, and this is what's called a watercolour pencil. Um, and essentially, so we've got, for example, this, this one's called a, a Van Dyke Brown. Um, so the watercolour pencil, it allows you to use it like a pencil, just like a normal colour and pencil. So you just put that down. And if we take another brush, dip it in the water, And can you see, you can basically go over it with a little bit of water and it blends all of the pencil together. So that's just a really handy, handy thing to use. But obviously you don't have to have these, but they're just quite, quite nice to try out 
if they are available. Um, so I'm just going to use for now, I'm just going to go back and just show you how this looks, just obviously using normal brown watercolour paint. So I'm going to take some dark brown and again I just quite like to, you could use a separate little piece of paper to test it if you don't want to spoil the backdrop, obviously I'm just testing it on here. Right, so I'm going to use this brown. Um, you will have probably used pencil to lay out the seeds, but if you didn't, if you went straight into pen, pen that's fine, but if you use pencil, obviously you'll need to rub that out first before you add the next layer of colour. So it's always good to go from a lighter colour first, so don't put too much on just because you want to be able to see through and see the seeds. using this thin layer here. Okay, I'm just leaving that to dry for a few moments. But then once that's dry, I've then gone back in and added in, just using normal colouring pencil, some little layers some little layers of colour, um, which is another layer of like a warm yellow, maybe some slightly orangey bits just to try and get some variation in that. Okay, so that's nearly, nearly dry. So I'm just going to take uh, some yellow and some medium brown. So you can see how that's kind of boosting up the colour. I mean, you could potentially, you know, you could shade each seed if you wanted to, you felt you wanted to do that, or you can just sweep across with a pencil. Okay, so um, once you have added in your layers of colouring pencil and completed all of those areas with the paint, then you should end up with the result like this and what's great about this activity is it will prepare you for the next one where we'll be using the same techniques thank you so much for joining me